Welcome back to the Trevor Tysman Show. I had to do it. I had to make the video. I've been searching all winter long for a video that really paints the picture of whether or not I want a wake boat or a forward-facing drive to move my family into surfing. Now, I've got a wife and two young daughters that are probably going to want to get into the surfing thing. Me, personally, I'll dabble a little bit, but I really enjoy sit-down hydrofoiling. Probably you haven't heard of it. That's fine. No big deal. This video is not about that. To take that transition into the trending new water sports, uh, we just went to the 2022 boat show, and it, there's no doubt that the whole industry is embracing surfing, whether it be normal stern drive boats taking the transition into the forward Volvo Pinto uh, forward facing drive so that you can begin doing the surfing or all of the wake boats, you can tell that it is completely and utterly the only thing that boat companies seem to be interested in. For example, the Cobalt is traditionally the most expensive, most luxurious version of a bow rider that you've been able to buy for the last couple decades. They don't cut any corners. Everything seems to be in uh, tip-top shape. No matter which Cobalt you get on, you know what to get out of a Cobalt. Even they have been bought out by Malibu, and the Malibu Surf Gate is now on a Cobalt. So you, even the most luxurious bow rider boat on the market has transitioned into giving you a surf version. I would imagine that sooner or later, the stern drive community in general of boats is going to go away. If all you have to do is turn a boat into a forward-facing prop drive to be able to allow it to be a surf boat, I just can't imagine that the market is not going to push all these boats to utilize that. And one of the major other reasons is as long as the Volvo Pinto keeps up and they don't have any type of wear and tear that we're not used to seeing in the old Merc Cruisers, which has not happened yet. I can't imagine that there is one family in America that wouldn't rather have the prop on the other side of the motor so that when they jump in the water, they don't have to worry about kicking it. So from the most simplistic standpoint, you would want the forward facing prop, which immediately allows for surfing. So I can't imagine that the stern drive era is going to be evolving into strictly surf boats is going to be the future of the industry. But let's get down to the point. We've got wake boats versus forward facing. One of the biggest comparisons that you have to look at is tie up and walkway abilities. When you get on a stern drive, or I guess I should just quit referring to the stern drive, the surf class in the bow rider boats all have much better walkways. You don't have to be a ninja rolling over seats. You don't have to crawl around on your knees nonstop to get in and out of these boats. And I know some of you probably are a-okay with that. But for me personally and my family, I do not like to walk around on my knees over pads all of the time. It's just not for me. I like being on wake boats. I enjoy the ride of the wake boats. The turning radius is phenomenal. The way that it rides in the water with less bow rise, I really enjoy that. It's just, if it was me and I had to spend the money, I have to have a walkway. So don't get me wrong, the Ski Nautique, they have a wonderful walkway, probably the best walkway in the business, nice and low. Many of the other boats, Mastercraft, uh, the XT series, I believe it is, they have a higher walkway. And basically, they're just throwing a little non-skid pad on top of their lounge area. But it's still rather high to step up. If you've ever stepped up into a Moomba from that back deck, you know, you might even have to pull that knee up a little bit. Now, I understand that this isn't for everybody. I'm not talking about teenagers finding it difficult to get in a boat. I'm talking about the guy that bought the boat. <laughs> That's who I'm talking about. Me, me. I don't want to crawl and lift my knee to my chest to get in and out of these boats. So uh, to me, that is one of the biggest comparisons that I have to start with is the walkway. And I've juggled this a million times because I realize for most people, it's probably wave quality. But as these forward drives begin to evolve and for instance, the Cobalt boat and Chaparral both have the Malibu surf gate now. Cobalt was bought by Malibu, and Chaparral has a licensing agreement with them. So at this day and age, you've got some of the top surf gate technology now on a forward-facing drive boat that's going to give you probably an above-average wave from what you would have had previous years with those tabs that move up and down. The tabs traditionally were built to prevent listing in these style boats, and now they've oversized them and 
and change the way that they interact with the hole to smooth out the wave slightly. But it's there's no doubting that the Malibu surf system is top notch. So if you're comparing the Cobalt boat and the Chaparral wave to save the actual Malibu LS, 23 LSV, 25 LSV, um, or anything in that world, no doubt. I, I, I am not arguing the fact that the Malibu boats are going to perform better and give you a better wave. They are capable of holding way more weight. They are capable of keeping things balanced to provide that smooth lip right off the back of the boat. And I think that forward-facing drives in another two or three years as the industry continues to embrace them, I don't know that you'll, we'll, you will actually be able to tell the difference in the wave in years to come. Many videos that I've seen with the Cobalt, if you have that thing weighted down, uh, the wave looks very, very compar- comparable to most Malibu boats that I've seen. Now, I do think the Malibu is a little bit bigger, but... Um, For most people, you know, I think the thing that everybody tries to strive for is the best of the best. We need the best of everything. And that's the way that human nature is. And I don't have a problem with that. And but if you take a look at reality and you realize that you could get a forward facing drive boat for fifty to seventy thousand dollars less than a top notch wake boat, does that last eight or nine inches, six inches on that wave really means anything to you and your novice surfing crew? My wife will not be a professional surfer. I will not be a professional surfer. My two kids will most likely not be a professional wake surfer. So do I need the best wave in the business? I don't know that it means that much to me personally. We do tie up and hang out with a lot of friends and do barbecues and um, swim out back and play a lot. And that's a lot of family time that you can't get back. Now, I don't think that when you're looking at Mastercraft, Nautique, Malibu, all your competition in the wake boat world, it's not that you can't do those things. But I can't imagine that anybody that has that boat would argue that a bow rider with a forward facing drive, whether you're looking at any of these new models, Cobalt, Regal, Crown Line, Chaparral, or probably your top, the ability or the situation that they have in the lounging area, the designs of the deck, the designs of the seating, you, you can't even compare it. If you have to step down off of a foot to get into the water, that's fine, but your kids are going to get up and down off that deck 400 times while you're swimming out. You can't beat the regal deck being down in the water while mom's laying on the lounge, dad's hanging out in the water. You can't beat that setup. You really can't. Crown line's a little bit worse with how high the deck is. It's a little bit higher, but still a great area for the kids to get up. And, you know, you go both ways with the height of the deck. The higher the deck, the kids like to jump off higher things. So it's kind of good, but then they have to use the ladder the entire time, which you know, it's not really a deal breaker. I'm just saying. Chaparral probably has the best lounging area that exists, but the design doesn't quite fit the boat near as much as maybe it should. When you look at a Cobalt or you look at a Chaparral, it really does look like the back lounging area is attached to a different boat. It doesn't fit it real well. It's definitely big and oversized. But if you're looking at practicality, probably the best lounging area in the game. It's an enormous back deck. The deck lowers down into the water. You can walk in and out, still plenty of room. Shoot, I think you could probably put a lawn chair on that deck. That's how much room there is. So uh, that is one of the biggest things that I've considered when you look at whether you should get a wake boat or a forward drive. If you're not going to be a professional surfer, I just don't know how I could choose a wake boat over having the other five hours of the day when there's swimming going on, having a better experience. Um, One of the other major factors in this is the height of the bimini and where it hits. And it's not like this in all boats, but it's something to look at. When I went to the 2022 boat show, there was a M220 uh, Malibu there. And when you walked in and out of this boat, the bimini was set to where it was right over the back bench seat. Well, for me to get out of this, I'm six foot four. And for me to get out of this boat, I literally had to bend my head down, swing my body out, and then stand up because where the bimini hit the seat, there was no way to actually get out of the boat. And with a lot of these boats, if you get the smaller versions of them, the wakeboard tower is the same mechanism no matter what length boat it is in most cases so the shorter the boat 
the farther that bimini hangs over your walkway to get actually out of the boat. So once again, you're up in the price. You're not looking at the 22 foot wake boat if you're me. Now I got to look at the 24 to 26 to even be able to get in and out of the boat that good. Because I use the Bimini. I'm full-time Bimini open, right? No one's getting sunburns on my boat. You know, little kids, I'm not trying to deal with bubbling skin, okay? So we're keeping our Bimini out full-time. So I'm going to be moving in and out of this. So that means that I'm not making a decision on a 22-foot boat. Now I'm in the 24 and 26-foot range, which is all 200 plus in price range. The prices jump dramatically based on the size of the boat, you know, across the board, whether it be your stern drive, whether it be a surf series in a bow rider, or whether it's just a wake boat. Longer they are, of course, the more expensive they are. But the way the Bimini impacts your walkway is a major part of how wake boats interact that are going to drive you up to needing a longer boat. And, you know, some of the other factors that become an issue too is being a boat captain or a dad, basically is you got to move up and down this thing very often, right? And a lot of the wake boat methods, other than Mastercraft, I believe, but most of them all have the pad in the front that is full flat across. Well, if you're docking your boat and you're the only magician running from end to end trying to make the magic work, a walkway is much better than standing on a seat getting up high. You know, when I'm 6'4", it may be different if you're shorter. You know, if I stand on a back pad, I'm six foot four. So when I stand on the back pad, I am literally above the tower. If you hit a wave, it is very, very unstable. Uh, Same goes for the front of the boat. If I don't have a lower walkway where there's a rail that I can grab and a big wave happens while I'm trying to dock the boat, it's not very stable. It's kind of dangerous. I'm up too high. I'm not close enough to grab anything. Uh, I can't just lay my thigh into the side of the boat. It's going to hit me in the shin and I'm going to go flying. So definitely something to think about when you're looking at the true essence of owning a boat. You're going to be docking it. You're going to be moving around through the cabin. How much room do you actually have? And this is probably the last point I'll make that was one of the biggest deciding points is the swimming out aspect is is definitely a big deal. The wave, definitely a big deal. You know, probably not as much to me as it is to others as far as the surf wave is concerned, but storage is a major thing as well. You know, When you have all these toys with children, and if you're older and you've gotten past this, you know, maybe it's a different story for you. So I can only speak to my own experiences. But when you get on a a surf wake style boat, there's not a tremendous amount of storage after you do what you're going to do. I have yet to hear of anyone not putting thousands of pounds of lead and or additional ballast bags inside the boat to make a bigger wave. Understandable. You want to have an awesome wave? I get it. I'm cool with it. The wave is sweet. Maybe one day I'll get more into surfing and really appreciate how big that wave is. But when it comes to, you know, working with your family on the boat, hiding things in cupboards, you know, getting things under seats, getting things out of the way, you really can't beat the storage on a bow rider. There's just so much more area. You get a bathroom in the crown line model from the 23, 25, and the 27 foot model. Do you know how much stuff you can put in a bathroom on a crown line? You could probably put a cooler, 19 life jackets, 67,000 rafts. I mean, there's just a lot of room in there. You can most definitely slide a cooler there. I wouldn't do it. You can't access the cooler at that point. I'm just trying to say, Volume wise, you can put mass amounts of things inside a bathroom alone, not to mention underneath the steering wheel is another enormous area. You open up the front, tons of storage in the back end. You've got storage everywhere if you're not actually filling up these ballast bags. And uh, the wake boats, unfortunately, if you're embracing the surf mentality, you get the extra weight, you've got the more ballast bags and everything set up. You're limited to basically the passenger side seat underneath the steering wheel is a majority of your storage. And don't get me wrong, if you're lean and mean and you're good to go, that's fine. But most anybody that brings anything on your boat is probably going to be putting it right in the middle. And whether or not that bothers you, you know, that's your own style. It doesn't, no skin off my back. I'm just telling you, for me, I like the additional storage that you get on a bow rider. And um, I guess my final thoughts would be, it'll be interesting to see as time goes on, what happens to the stern drive model 
into the surf. You know, if they turn, if Merck Cruiser comes out with a forward facing drive, I'm pretty sure that a stern drive model would just strictly be an outboard or a surf model with the prop on the other side. I just can't imagine that there's going to be a place in the market with so much competition towards surfing that everyone's not going to have to evolve into utilizing a forward facing prop. Not to mention it's much more safe. You know, you get the kids away from the prop. I tell you, I don't want to be next to the prop and kick it either. So those are my thoughts. My, I guess to be super, super clear, I'm on the bandwagon of a forward facing drive bow rider surf series more than the wake boats. And um, we'll see. Maybe it'll change one day. But right now, that's um, that's where I'm at. Hey, if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Or if you have anything that you disagree with, I'd love to chit chat with you about it in the comments. I think that uh, everything's pretty fresh right now. I just went to this boat show over the weekend. So jump on there, throw me some comments, and uh, I'll give you my opinion on what uh, I discovered.